The first component to install is going to be this power cable connector. Now you'll notice that on one side of the connector it's just blank, there's no holes at all. On the other side we do have holes. This is where we're going to screw in the power cable connector to. So we need to make sure we get it around the right way. So with the LED matrix power red like so, we're going to get the blank side facing to the left. Just like that. That way we can now screw in the power cable connectors here. Alright, now before we solder, this is why we're, we're going to use some masking tape here. Just get a, a small bit of masking tape just to hold the component in place. So you'll have to lift the board off the table, put some tape there so it's pushed in nice and tight, and then when we turn it over, the legs protrude through here. So I'll see if I can just zoom in a little bit there. Alright, so here's our four legs coming through here. Now, in order to solder, of course, we're going to need some solder. Now the first thing I want you to make note of, again, if you haven't ever soldered before, this is just going to give you a few little helpful tips. If I was to get some of this solder and just touch it to any one of these pads or any one of these legs, you notice that nothing happens. It doesn't melt. Now that may sound a bit strange, or you may think, well of course, it's not going to melt if you just touch it there. But what I want you to get in your head is, it's not melting because it's not hot. The only way it's going to melt is if we can get that there up to a temperature that's going to melt the solder. So the reason I say that is, a lot of people when they solder, they come along with the soldering iron and they move the soldering iron around. They keep moving it like that when they're trying to solder in different places. Don't do that. What you want to do is put the soldering iron, first of all, sorry, make sure the soldering iron is clean. So in order to do that, you can get your sponge, just wipe it on the sponge a bit and it should be nice and shiny, very silvery. Once you've done that, put the soldering iron in so that it touches both the circuit board pad and also the leg of the component coming through. Let it heat up for just a couple of seconds. Then get the solder so that it touches all three at once. The circuit board pad, the soldering iron, and also the leg of the component. And you'll notice that the solder starts to melt. Don't move the soldering iron just move the solder around, but leave the soldering iron right where it is. If you take the soldering iron away, that is now going to cool down. If it cools down, the solder will no longer melt. The way that you get the solder around every part of the pad and leg is to just move the solder. So we'll do that same technique. Put the soldering iron in, let it heat up for just a couple of seconds, touch the solder, so it touches the iron, the pad and the leg, let it melt, don't move the soldering iron, and just put the solder on the other side as well. And we just continue that. A couple of seconds, touch all three, let it melt, bring some to the other side. Let it uh, heat up for a couple of seconds, touch all three, let it melt, put some to the other side. Alright, we've done our first component. Turn it over, we can take that tape off. The next component we'll do is, oops, there we go, the IC socket, or the microcontroller socket. Now just be sure that the legs are nice and straight here. If they are, you can put that into the 18F46K22 position. So this one I'm having a little bit of problems with, so I just need to double check that they, okay, I've got a couple here that aren't straight. So I'm just going to straighten them out. So it's a tiny bit blurry there. See if it plugs in and it goes in nicely. In this case, I can just use this same bit of tape to hold that in place. So put the tape over it, lift it off the, the desk a bit, and then turn this over. Now you'll notice that we've got 40 legs with which to solder now. So this one's going to take a little bit more time, but the process is still the same. So we simply come in, touch the pad and the leg, bring the solder in. Never take the soldering iron off until you're finished, because if you take it off and you still need to solder it, it's, um, it's going to cool down and the solder won't melt. In this case, I don't really need to move the solder around because the pad is a lot smaller than when we dealt with the other one.
and we can just keep going all the way down the line until they're all done. Now because I'm using a socket, there's really no problem in me just going right down the line in sequence like this. If I was directly soldering in like a, a sensitive microcontroller like this, you'd use what's called the shotgun effect, or the shotgun method I should say. That is where you solder here, and then you'll go maybe over here, and then you'll go over here. You'll notice that I'm just going to random spots when I'm soldering. The reason for this is, when we just go straight down the line like this, we're really concentrating a lot of heat in one area. So if you're concentrating heat in one specific area, there is the possibility, a slight possibility, that you might damage one of these. So if you use the shotgun effect, you're not concentrating in one area, you're jumping all over the place. But again, since I'm just using a socket, there's really no problem in just doing it this way. Alright, so we're nearly done with this. couple more and that's all all right so now the socket soldered in you can turn it over and take the tape off now the socket itself doesn't matter which way you put the socket around however when it comes to putting in our little microcontroller we must make sure that this is oriented correctly and the way that you know that is it's got a little divot over here and that divot lines up with the divot that's on the circuit board as well. So the way that we'll plug it in is just like that. But we don't need to do that just yet. Alright, next up let's solder in these two buttons. So we'll put that in over here, just move it so you can see. So it doesn't matter which button goes where, they're both exactly the same. And it doesn't matter if you rotate them around, they, they work just fine either way. All right, so we'll plug that in, plug that in. I can use that same bit of tape just to make sure it's held in place. Turn the board over, and we're gonna solder in these eight connections. So same method again. Let it heat up a bit, bring the solder in, touching all three, and maybe just put some around the back there. Some around the back. So remember, always leave your soldering iron on there until you're finished. Those ones are done. Let's turn it over, get rid of that tape. So we're getting some good mileage out of this tape, as you can see. Uh, let's see, next up, let's go for the LED matrix data connector. So you notice with this one, it's got a cutout over this side, but no cutout over this side. So just make sure the cutout lines up with this little divot on the circuit board. So make, don't, make sure you don't get it the other way around. So make sure the little cutout is facing to the left, which is where the divot is on the circuit board. Okay, let's use some tape to hold it in place. Turn it over and we've got 16 connections to solder in. Once again, using our same method, bring the soldering iron in, touch the solder to all three, and that's it. So these ones, a little bit tricky because you've got a lot of, a lot of pads contained in the one spot. So you just want to make, make sure, or be careful, so that the solder doesn't go over multiple pads. And just work our way down the line. Again, we don't need to shotgun this one. We can just go straight in the line because we don't have a sensitive component that we're soldering in. Three more. One, two, and three. Now, if you do happen to join, or bridge as they say, 
um, a couple of connections. Let's say you just put on so much solder that you connected those two together. What you want to do is just clean all the solder off your soldering iron. So just rub it onto that wet sponge. And then you can just get the soldering iron and run it down a little bit like that. And in a lot of cases, it's going to get rid of that, that solder bridge or that solder connection. All right, everything's looking good here. Let's take that tape off. Let's now put in this little guy. This is a filter capacitor. This one here just helps the little microcontroller um, to make sure that it doesn't really get big noise spikes on it. It tries to keep the voltage across it nice and smooth. So we just need to put that in, push it all the way down. Once again, we can tape it down. Turn the board over and you'll notice the legs come through a long way. Now, I mean best practice is to cut the legs before we solder it. But this is perfectly fine just to solder it straight in using the same method. And then you can cut it with scissors or, I mean, I can just use the pliers that I've got here to cut that. Or you might have some side cutters. There's lots of different ways to cut those legs. Uh, whoops, I didn't actually show you how I did that. But I just came along, put that across there, cut them off. And now that filter capacitor is held in place nicely. Alright, so we're, we're most of the way there in fact. The next one we're going to do is this USB connector. So this is, how, this is what powers the thing up by plugging it into a USB port or charger. So just make sure the legs are nice and straight. This one is a little bit off. That looks pretty good. Oops, was pretty good. Alright, and we plug this one into here. Like so. Masking tape to hold it in place. And we turn it over. Now we've got some two big connections here. So they might just need a little bit longer to make sure that it really gets filled with solder. So start putting the solder in. That'll really heat it up and then bring the solder over the other side to really fill that hole with solder. Same thing over here. Let it heat up for a bit, bring the solder in so it touches the iron and the pad and the leg, and then maybe put some around the back until it's all filled with solder. Then we just need to do the four smaller connections. One, two, three, and four. Get rid of the masking tape and that one's held in place nicely. Alright, the last thing to do is put in four of these guys, four of the potentiometers. So the way that we do this is we turn the board over, just have a look at these one at a time. You notice we've got one here, one in this corner, one in this corner, and another one here. So it doesn't matter which order we start in. We just place one in like that. Now, before we come to solder these three, turn it over. Get a washer. Put that on the board over there. And then get one of the nuts. Put that over there and then just screw it down. Now this is where you can get your pliers just to screw it on correctly. Now of course, pliers aren't the best tool for this, but the reason I chose pliers was because I think most people have pliers lying around the house. Um, I perhaps say that pe people are more likely to have a set of pliers around the house rather than having maybe a spanner set or a shifter or, um, or a socket set or something like that. But of course, whatever tools that you've got that are going to work, that's fine. So that one's put in. Let's do the other three. So just put that in there. Oops, sorry, there we go. So I'll put another one in there. Put a washer on. Put the nut on. 
screw it down as far as you can finger tight and then use the uh, pliers there we go. two more oh, there we go that one there washer and the nut your pliers or whatever tool you've chosen to use for this just tighten it up a little bit and then our last one put that in washer nut do it up finger tight Tighten just that little bit more with your pliers. All right, now that those four are in, turn it over. I'll do these one at a time. But all we're going to do in this case is, and you could use a little screwdriver or something, we're just going to push the legs down so they touch the circuit board. So just angle it down. Let's see if I can get a, a better shot of that. So I've just angled them down. So now they're touching that shiny surface of the circuit board or the pad is what we normally call that and do that for all of them so just push it down so it's touching the circuit board pad do another one push it down and our last one push it down there we go all right, so now what we're going to do here is you're going to require a lot of solder. So clean off the soldering iron tip, put it, wipe it on the sponge there. And we're really just going to fill this whole thing with solder. So you notice I just put lots of solder in there. That'll now connect that leg down to the actual circuit board pad. In fact, this one's not pushed down all the way. I'll just push it down a little bit further. So soldering iron in, touching the leg and the pad, and then the solder, so it's touching all three, and just keep pushing it in, flooding it with solder. Same for this last one. Flooding it with solder. All right, rotate it around. Let's see if I can get a different angle on this one. There we go. Really flood it with solder, oops. I've been watching there. Flood it with solder. And one more. Right. Turn it around. Oops, let's turn it the right way. That one was already done. This so one here, flood it with solder. Flood it with solder. And same again, flood it with solder. And one last one. So notice again that I'm, I'm never moving my soldering iron. If you move the soldering iron, you're going to let the connection cool down. If it cools down, then the solder doesn't melt. So we always just keep the soldering iron in the one spot. And then we remove it once we're finished. All right, that's all four potentiometers done. All right, now that we have all those components soldered in, we can now look at putting in the LED matrix display. First of all, though, we've got two connections that will go to the display. We've got the power connector, and the data connector. The power connector goes to here, LED matrix power. You notice that it's got ground or GND, which is ground and plus five volts. You will connect the black wire or the black connector to the ground um, two screw terminals like that. And then you'll go the red one to the plus five volts, which is our positive connector. 
and so we screw both of those down as well. Alright, so now they should be held in place pretty well, just like that. <clears throat> now for the data connection, we've got this grey cable here. Now the way that this will go in is you'll have the red stripe facing to the top of the board. So that, to the bottom of the board, is upside down. That is correct. Uh, in fact, like that, <laughs> that's how we need it to go. Uh, the reason that you won't be able to do it this way is because we don't want the wire to be coming out towards the right. We want it to be going this way so the cable is coming out towards the left. So we plug that in. So there's our power, there's our data. Now the way that you need to put the screen around, so there's four different ways obviously you could put this around, is you'll notice that we've got this little um, symbol where it's got a hand with a, a cross going through it, which means don't touch all of these components. That needs to be upside down, so the arrow or the triangle should be pointing with the pointy end down. Or another way of looking at it is you've got an arrow here and you've got an arrow here. So that arrow should be pointing down, this one should be pointing across to the left. So with it oriented like that, plug the data cable in, sorry, the power cable in, with the red to the right, the black to the left, so red to the positive, black to the negative. In fact, you can't put it around the other way, it won't let you plug it in. And then the data cable comes along and goes to this right-hand side connector. The right-hand side connector is further away from the power connector than this left-hand connector is. So the right-hand one simply plugs in like that. And you won't be able to get this backwards either. It's got a little keyway thing in there and you can't possibly put the cable in the, the other way around. Alright, so with that, that is going to get installed just like this. Now this is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing, which is putting in the four screws, so these four here, along with our little 12mm standoffs. So these standoffs just hold the LED matrix a little bit above the board to give the components uh, in the board some space. So the best way to do this is as follows. Alright, so just move the LED matrix a little bit out of the way. And you'll notice that we start to reveal some screw holes. The screw holes that we'll be using, we only need four of them, even though there's eight screw holes in total. The four that we'll be using are the ones that are in a bit further. So we don't want to use these very outside ones close to the corners. We want to use these ones that are in a bit. The reason for these other ones that are close to the corners is because there's two different styles of LED matrix that you can get. And they each have different screw locations or different hole locations. The ones that provided in this kit have these hole locations, like these. So I'm going to start with this one down here. So just put a screw through the board, like that. Now holding it with one of your hands, get a 12mm standoff, put it through there. And then, again, a little bit tricky, but you want to try and line that up with the screw hole and then just screw that in. Now just do it finger tight. Now that one's held in place and we're going to do the same sort of thing for the other three. So I'm going to get a screw, put it through the board, grab a standoff, put the standoff on the screw and then just line that up with the hole. I can. There we go. And then just screw it in. About finger tight will do. Okay, so there's those two. Let's turn it around, do the same for the other side. And it gets trickier the more that you put in. So I'll put this one in. In fact, I won't put it in all the way just to allow me to get this spacer on. There we go. Line it up with the hole. Screw it in, and then let's do the last one. Put it through there. Get the spacer. 
line it up with the hole and screw it in. Now just to protect the the um, the cover a little bit, I'm just going to put this down, put that on top, get your screwdriver and do these up properly. Now you don't need to do them overly tight, just kind of nip them up so it's it's nice and firmly in place, like that, like that, and there we go. All right, now let's grab four of these little rubber feet, and we're going to put one on each of these. In fact, sometimes these can have a bit, a little tiny bit of oil on them. So I recommend maybe getting um, a sponge or something and just, just giving them a little bit of a wipe off like that just to try and get some of that residue off. And then uh, if I had a towel, I'm just going to use my sleeve and then just dry them off. This is just going to help help them stick just that little bit better. Okay, so we're going to need four of these. You've got spares in there as well. That's why you've been given um, more than four. So just push that on nice and tight, or nice and hard. Push it down. Push it down. And finally, Push it down. So there's those four. Okay, now we can get these. Oop. Try not to drop it. These four potentiometer knobs. Obviously, just put one in each corner, pushing it down nice and hard. Just like that. Now, the completed retro ball is ready for testing.